today i will explain you a uh, chapter 10 okay chapter 10 11 12 13 14 so the chapters are related to organizational change okay how organize organization can change effectively to manage uh, different types of environmental changes because uh, environment is uncertain so many factors affect um, the organization's uh, efficiency and the hence the organization must change according to the changes in the environment okay so <clears throat> chapter 10 uh, here given so one by one the so first topic here name of the chapter given types and so this is the name of the chapter types and forms of organizational say what are different types of uh, organizational change are there and what are different forms also so one by one i will explain so before going into detail so we must know what is organizational change so here it is given organizational change it is nothing but a process by which organizations move from their current state to some desired future state to increase their effectiveness okay so that's what it is so moving from their current state means organizations move from their current state to some desired future state to increase their effectiveness so this process is known as organizational change it means moving from the current state to some future desired state for increasing their effectiveness so that's what it is organizational change the goal of planned the goal of planned organizational change is to find new or improved way of using resources and capabilities in order to increase an organization's ability to create value and improve returns to its stakeholders so what is the reason means why organizations you know what change means why they use why organization choose planned organizational change so they choose planned organizational change to find new or improved ways of using resources and capabilities in order to increase an organization now you see why they choose a planned organizational change to find new or improved way of using resources means whatever resources are there in the organization they want to use in such a way that uh, effectiveness can be increased so that's why they try to find out they try to find out improved way of doing things so that's what it is planned uh, that is the goal of planned organizational change so goal of the planned organizational change is to find new and uh, improved a way of using uh, organizational resources and capabilities to increase an organization's ability to create value so targets uh, of change given so planned organizational change is normally you see here on the screen so this is the target uh, of change planned organizational change is normally targeted at improving effectiveness at one or more of four different levels okay improving so we are given targets of change means why organization change so target here given improving effectiveness at one or more of the four different means here the goal is to improve the effectiveness at one or more of the four different levels so four levels here given human resources second given functional resources second third given technological capabilities and fourth given organizational capabilities so at these four different levels organization so try to improve effectiveness so one by one i will uh, explain uh, this in detail so so let me 
see what it is. Okay, here at these four different levels, I will explain you. Okay, now here you can see the first four different levels here given improving effectiveness. Here, improving effectiveness at one or more of four different levels so these are four different levels where effectiveness can be improved so the first given it was first it is given human resources second given functional functional resources third given technological capabilities and fourth given organizational capabilities so one by one i will explain this in detail so first uh, here human resources Typical kind of change efforts directed at human resources include. So what are different uh, typical kinds of change efforts for human resources are there. So the first uh, here given under this new investment in training and development activities so that uh, employees acquire new skills and abilities. So here investment should be there. Okay. So that's uh, what I'm explaining targets of change. So where should be change uh, in the organization at uh, human resources level. So there should be more investment in training and development activities. So why more investment so that employees acquire new skills and ability. Second given under human resources means what are different uh, things which we should do uh, in human resources so that uh, targets or you can say the uh, effectiveness of the organization can be increased so second here given socializing employees into the organizational culture so that they learn new routines on which organizational performance depend so here socialization is very important if uh, employees are socialized in the organizational culture then in that case they will be uh, more effective in uh, coordinating with other employees and if uh, there is uh, better coordination among different employees then in that case uh, effectiveness of the organization will automatically increase so that it was the second uh, target for human resources third given changing organizational norms and values to motivate a multicultural and diverse workforce so here if it is required then uh, organizational norms and values should be changed to motivate a multicultural because uh, maybe uh, the norms and the values are not uh, in accordance with be, uh, with the multicultural and diverse work workforce so that's why there may be need to change organizational norms and values to motivate multicultural and, and diverse workforce so that's your third one the fourth given fourth given under uh, human resources target at improving effectiveness again okay. means so at uh, human resource level fourth given ongoing examination of the way in which promotion and reward system operate in a diverse workforce now you see here the fourth one here given ongoing examination of the way in which promotion and reward system operate in a diverse workforce so how uh, you know what promotion and reward the systems uh, are operating uh, in the diverse workforce uh, that should be examined properly and the fifth one given changing the composition of top management team to improve organizational learning and decision making 
so here if uh, the effectiveness is not increasing by changing uh, other uh, uh, things uh, in human resources then it is uh, required that uh, top management team should be changed okay or you can say the composition of the top management team should be changed to improve the organizational learning and decision making second level means target of change at functional resources okay this is the second uh, level for improving effectiveness uh, of the organization for increasing the effectiveness of the organization what are different things uh, which organizations should do at functional resources as the environment changes organizations often transfer resources to functions where the most value can be created okay means moving the resources moving the resources uh, to the functions uh, where maximum value can be created if the environment changes because with the change in the environment value creation activities uh, should also change to increase the effectiveness if the organization does not uh, change the way organization um, you know it operates or you can say the different functions uh, operate then in that case effectiveness will not increase so that's why written as the environment changes organizations often transfer resources to the functions where the most value can be created so always transfer resources where, uh, to the functions where most value can be created crucial functions grow in importance while those uh, whose usefulness is declining single now you see here crucial functions grow in importance so whatever functions are very important or vital for the organization so those functions uh, are going to grow in importance while those uh, whose usefulness is declining will shrink an organization can improve the value that its functions create by changing its uh, structure and technology so now by changing the structure and technology the organization can improve the value that its functions create so these are the things uh, we, uh, which can be done at uh, functional resources level for making the organizational more effective third given technological capabilities so technological capabilities give an organization an enormous capacity to change itself in order to exploit market opportunities so whatever different types of uh, market opportunities are there so those things can be exploited by using uh, technological capabilities if the organization is technologically capable then in that case that organization will be able to exploit market opportunities otherwise that organization cannot so that's why there is a need for the organization to target change in at technological capabilities also okay this is about the fourth sorry third level of uh, uh, third level of targets of change so where the should you know, where the, the change should happen in the organization so that this is at the uh, technological capabilities level and the fourth given organizational capabilities so what are the different things which the organization can do to improve organizational capabilities by changing by changing uh, the organization so here whatever things i'm explaining now whether it is human resource uh, or uh, functional resources or technological capabilities or organizational capabilities so these all things uh, are related to organizational change means what are different things which uh, the organization can do at these four levels so that uh, the effectiveness of the organization can be improved so at fourth level organizational capabilities um, given through the design of organizational structure and culture an organization can harness its human and uh, functional resources to take advantage of technological capabilities so now you see here given organizational capabilities so through the design of organizational structure if the organization design its structure and culture in such a way that uh, it can harness human and functional resources uh, to take advantage of technological opportunity then um, organization will be in a better position 
to take advantage of the opportunities present in the environment so that's why written here through the design of organizational structure and culture an organization can harness uh, its uh, human and uh, functional resources to take advantage of technological opportunity so next uh, given organizational change often involves changing the relationships between people and functions to increase their ability to create value so now you see so ability to create value can also be improved you see how can that can be improved by changing uh, the relationship uh, between people and functions okay if the relationships uh, between people and functions can uh, be altered now you are changing the relationship between people and function to increase their ability so by changing the relationship between people and functions uh, ability to create value can be improved so these were uh, four different uh, levels of targets of change so first it was human resources where uh, organizational change uh, targets second it was functional resources third it was uh, technological capabilities and the fourth it was organizational capabilities now next uh, here given forces for and resistance to organizational change so what are different types of forces are there present uh, in the environment uh, which uh, support which uh, which make the organization to change and what are different types of resistance when organization try to change then in that case so what are different types of resistances uh, are offered to the organization so first uh, forces for change so what are different types of forces for change so the first force of change it is given competitive forces okay so what are things what are things given under competitive forces organizations are constantly striving to achieve a competitive advantage competition is a force for change because unless an organization matches or surpasses its uh, competitors in efficiency quality or its uh, capability to innovate new or improved goods or services it will not survive it means competitive forces means here competitive force is uh, even organizations are constantly striving means if organization want to survive then in that case that organization will have to be competitive advantage okay and that competitive advantage can be achieved if the organization change so that's why here given competitive force so in this way competitive forces make the organization to change competition is a force for change because unless an organization matches or surpasses its competitor so that's why here given so or the organization will have to match or surpass its uh, competitors for surviving in the environment otherwise uh, organization cannot survive in the competitive environment so this is the first of course competitive forces second given economic political and global forces second here i'm underlining second given economic political and global forces so economic political and global forces continually affect organizations and compel them to change how and where they produce goods and services so these all for them is whether it is economic whether it is political or whether it is global for so these these things uh, continually affect uh, organizations to change because these forces uh, affect uh, means where and how those organizations should uh, produce uh, goods and services so economic and political unions among countries uh, becoming an increasingly important force for change so unions means economic and political unions uh, are becoming very important for change so that's why given economic and political unions among countries are becoming an increasingly important uh, force for change third given demographic and social forces demographic so, so this is the third uh, 
here I am underlining so this is here it is underlined so third force for change given demographic and social forces how demography and uh, social forces affect uh, organizations the way they the, the way the organizations behave uh, to changes in the environment increasingly changes in the demographic characteristic of the workforce have led managers to change their styles of managing all employees and to learn how to understand supervise and motivate diverse members effectively increasing now given changes in the demographic characteristics of the workforce so due to changes in the demographic characteristic of the workforce managers should change their styles of managing all employees because uh, people are coming from different uh, backgrounds uh, different social and economic uh, conditions so that's why the manager should uh, change their styles of managing them so that uh, those employees are going to be motivated fourth uh, here given it is about uh, ethical forces so this is the fourth uh, types of force uh, which uh, make the organization to change which forces the organization to change so here uh, you see it is important for an organization to take steps to promote ethical behavior in the face of increasingly government political and social demands for more responsible and honest uh, corporate behavior so government is pressurizing organization to behave ethically and social demands are for more responsible and organizations are becoming more and more responsible because pressures are going on from the government from the political system from the social demand so these all things are making the organization to behave in in a responsible way in a socially responsible way so that's why organizations will have to change according to that effective organizations are as as i enough to adjust to these forces so those organizations which are strong enough or versatile enough dynamic enough uh, to change due to these forces are better able to adjust but many forces internal to an organization make the organization resistant to change okay so here given some organizations are better better able to adjust to these forces but some organizations are not able to adjust to these forces due to organizational resistance means within the organizational there are factors which resist the organization to change thus uh, threaten its effectiveness and survival so those resistance to changes affect or you can say threaten its effectiveness and survival so what are these uh, resistance to change one of the main reasons for some organizations inability to change is organizational inertia the tendency of an organization to maintain the status quo you see here here given organizational inertia so this is the reason means organizational res resistance is responsible for resistance to change in the organization and what is this organizational inertia so this is the tendency of an organization to maintain the status quo so means that the, some organization wants to main some organizations want to maintain a status quo and due to that uh, uh, the organization uh, does not want to change according to the changes in the environment so this uh, inertness or this uh, makes the organization not to change and this is known as organizational inertia the tendency of an organization to maintain the status quo resistance to change lower resistance to change lowers an organization's effectiveness and reduces its um, 
and reduces its chances of survival. So resistance to change is very, you know, crucial. If the organization is not able, not able to manage resistance uh, to change, then in that case, uh, it may threaten uh, its uh, survival. Resistances or impediments to change that are that cause inertia are found at organizational group and individual levels. Now you see at uh, at these levels, uh, resistance to change uh, are found. So given resistance or impediments to change that cause inertia. So whatever resistance resistances to change are there. So those resistances which cause inertia are found at organizational level, group level and individual level. So how you see organizational level resistance to change. So th three levels means resistance uh, occur at uh, three levels. So first uh, it is organizational level, second it is at group level and the third it is individual level. So one by one, see, organizational level, resistance to change, many forces inside an organization make it difficult for the organization to change in response to changing conditions in its environment. Many forces inside an organization make it difficult for the organization to change in response to changing condition in the environment. So organization is not changing according to the changes in the environment. So the most powerful organizational level impediments to change include power and conflict. You see here. So what are different factors uh, which are making the organization not to change in accordance with the changes in the environment. Here given power and conflict. So here given the power and uh, conflict. Second given differences in fundam uh, sorry found Difference in functional, sorry, here I think uh, here given a little mistake and differences, differences in functional orientation here it should be, okay, functional, okay, here it should be, here I am writing, here it should be functional functional differences in functional orientation and third given mechanistic structure and fourth given organizational culture so at the organizational level these are the four different uh, powerful organization you can impediments for uh, impediments to change so the first uh, impediment to change or, or resistance to change at organizational level given power and conflict so when change when changes causes power struggles and organizational conflict an organization is likely to resist it so you see here whenever there it is power struggle due to organizational change so power struggle and organizational conflict due to changes then in that case organization resist change if powerful functions can prevent change an organization will not change so here if uh, power combination it is going to change due to change in the organization then the organization will resist to change and if the powerful functions can prevent change organization will not change it means it depends that how much powerful the functions are to prevent the change if they are powerful enough then the organization will not change second uh, given differences in functional orientation so at 
under the organization level resistance to change given differences in functional orientation how differences in functional orientation cause resistance to change at organizational level see different functions and divisions you see here different functions and divisions often see the source of a problem differently because they see an issue or problem primarily from their own viewpoint so this tunnel so different functions and divisions see source of problem means whatever uh, you know what uh, is the source of the problem so different function divisions uh, see the issue primarily from their own viewpoint they are not able to see the problem from the perspective of other functions or divisions so this is tunnel vision so now due to this tunnel vision so this is also known as tunnel vision in, its, in the organization so this tunnel vision increases organizational inertia because the organization must spend time and effort to secure agreement about the source of a problem before it can even consider how the organization needs to change to respond to the problem so before moving to change in the organization different functions and, and divisions uh, should agree with each other on the viewpoint of the source of the problem if they are not agree then uh, the change process cannot uh, start the change process can start only in the case of when the different divisions and functions are able to see the source of the problem from the viewpoint of others also third resistance to change is mechanistic structure third resistance to change at organization level is mechanistic structure mechanistic structure also poses resistance to change at organizational level how mechanistic structures are more resistance to change more resistant to change okay. people who work within a mechanistic structure are expected to act in certain ways and do not develop the capacity to adjust their behavior to changing condition how mechanistic structure affect or how mechanistic structure resist changes to organization you see mechanist according to the mechanistic structure people working in the mechanistic under uh, mechanistic structure they should uh, not develop they should not act in a different way means they should act according to the predefined uh, ways only so when there is change in the environment so they are not able to change themselves because they are expected because they uh, are they are habitual of uh, doing things according to the given uh, norms only nothing else so that's why it is not possible to change in the mechanistic structure this is uh, very difficult to change when the structure of the organization is mechanistic so people who work within a mechanistic structure are expected to act in certain ways only they are expected to act in certain ways so people act only in certain ways and do not deviate from those certain ways even if uh, there are changes in the environment fourth given fourth uh, organization level of resistance given organizational culture if the organizational change disrupts taken for granted values you see if organizational change disrupts taken for granted values and norms and forces people to change what they do and how they do it an organization's culture will cause resistance to change so you see here organizational culture it is related to taken for granted uh, values and norms means it is about organizational culture is about uh, values and norms values and norms uh, the way people behave in the organization 
in different situations if that to values or you can say those values and norms are going to change due to organizational change then organization culture will impose or you can say will restrict the organizational change process second level uh, second level given here group level resistance to change so what are the different things um, at group level which resist to change much of an organization's work is performed by groups and several group characteristics can produce resistance to change so different several group characteristics can produce resistance to change many groups develop strong informal norms that specify appropriate and inappropriate behaviors and govern the interactions between group members so many group develop many groups are develop strong informal norms informal norms are being developed in different groups and accordingly people in the organization behave and interact with each other often changes alters task and role relationship and whenever there is a change in the organization then that change will alter alters task and role relation means how individuals are going to interact with each other are going to be changed if organization is going to change <clears throat> so that's why in organize organizations or you can say groups resist the change in the organization so that's a given often changes alters changes alters task and uh, role relationship in a group when it does it disrupts group norms and the informal expectations that group members have of one another it means uh, what are different things they have uh, they expect um, from uh, one another so those things are going to be altered by changes in the organization so that's why they resist as a result members of a group may resist change because as a whole new develop now you can see as a whole new set of norms may have to be developed to meet the needs of the new situation so until new norms are going to be developed uh, in the group group members are going to resist the change in the organization then uh, third given individual level resistance to change means at individual level what are different things uh, which we should consider uh, when uh, the organization is trying to change so people tend here people tend to resist change because they feel uncertain and insecure about what its outcome will be you see here resist change because they feel uncertain so if when people feel uncertain and insecure people feel uncertain and insecure about what its outcome will be so whatever what its outcome will be so when people are uncertain and insecure then they resist so uncertainty and insecurity about the future will make the people to resist the change in the organization there is general tendency for people to selectively perceive information that is uh, consistent with their existing view of their organization you see here there is general tendency for people to selectively perceive information that is consistent with their existing views of their organization it means whatever it is the existing uh, views of uh, organization which uh, people possess so those existing views will make the people to select a certain information and not receive other information which are not inconsistent with the existing views so that's why here you can say and if there is inconsistency with the information which 
they are getting and uh, whatever they already possess then they are not going to uh, accept those all information some informations are going to be blocked by those people habit habit people's preferences for uh, family reactions and events is a further impediment to to change so habit and people's preferences are also cause resistance to change people have a <clears throat> people have a built-in tendency to return to their original behaviors and tendency that uh, stimulates change that obstruct change you see people try to return to their original behaviors means whenever there is change process going on in the organization then behaviors of people uh, should also change but what happens after some time they try to return there is tendency to return to their original behavior so this uh, tendency of returning to the original behavior also cause resistance to change or obstructs obstruct the change process so these things were all about uh, resistance to change at individual level here one given heading levin's force field theory so what is this levin's force field theory of change researcher kurt levin developed a theory about organizational change so so this is a theory for organizational change and this theory is developed by a researcher uh, kurt levin he developed this theory of organizational change according to this uh, force field theory when the forces are evenly balanced the organization is in a state of inertia and does not change according to this theory when the forces are evenly balanced if all forces to change are balanced then organization is in a state of inertia and will not change to get an organization to change managers must find a way to increase the forces for change and reduce resistance to change okay here if the manager wants that uh, organization should change and if the organization want the change in the organization then the managers will have to increase the forces for change and reduce the resistance to change so only by that the organization can be changed so either one can be done either uh, the forces for change can be increased or the resistance can be decreased or both can be done at the same time any of these uh, strategies will overcome inertia and cause an organization to change so this strategy means increasing the force for change or reducing the ch resistance or doing both uh, will overcome inertia and the organization will change according to force field theory levin's force field theory techniques that managers can use to overcome resistance and facilitate change decide uh, types of change so you see here uh, techniques that managers can use to overcome resistance and facilitate uh, change decide types of change <clears throat> they can implement to increase organizational effectiveness so whatever different types of techniques managers are using to overcome resistance and facilitate change will decide types of change means what type of changes should be there in the organization will depend on the techniques I mean what are different types of techniques managers are using to overcome resistance and facilitate uh, change next uh, heading given evolutionary and revolutionary change in sorry evolutionary and revolutionary change in organization so there are several types of change that managers can adopt to help their organization achieve desired future states there are many types of change give, uh, are possible which uh, managers can adopt to help the organization to achieve desired future state but in general 
types of change fall into two broad categories so here given two broad categories the first here given evolutionary this is evolutionary and the second it is given revolutionary change first evolutionary change what is that it is a gradual evolutionary change is gradual incremental and narrowly focused here the change is gradual in case of evolutionary change change is gradual incremental and focused narrowly there is constant there is a constant attempt to improve adopt and adjust a strategy and a structure incrementally to accommodate to changes taking place in the environment so to accommodate the changes taking place in the environment there is a constant attempt to improve adopt and adjust so here the change is incremental in case of evolutionary change the change strategies are incremental so that's why here given uh, there is a constant to improve adopt and adjust a strategy and a structure incrementally so whatever is strategy is given so whether it is imp improving adopting adjusting uh, so these all things are incremental to accommodate changes taking place in the environment so whatever uh, changes are going on in the environment according to that the organization change incrementally to adopt and adjust in case of evolutionary change socio technical systems theory total quality management and the creation of the empowered flexible work groups are three instruments of evolutionary change that organizations use in their attempts to make incremental improvements in the way work gets done so three given so first given socio technical systems theory second given so i should uh, here mention number 1 so here it is total quality management tqm total quality management and third it is given the creation of empowered flexible work groups so these are the three instruments of evolutionary change or you can say these are three uh, types of evolutionary change which organizations use to make incremental improvement so evolutionary it's a revolutionary change second here it is given revolutionary change so revolutionary change is rapid dramatic and broadly focused here it is given rapid it is a type of rapid dramatic and broadly focused change revolutionary change involves a bold attempt to quickly find a new ways to be effective so it is rapid dramatic and broadly focused and here it involves a bold attempt to quickly find new ways to be effective here it uh, organization find um, new ways to be effective quickly so whatever uh, ways in whatever ways the organization can be effective so those ways can be found very quickly in case of revolutionary change so types of revolutionary yeah, sorry types of evolutionary change so now we are going to uh, understand the uh, different types of evolutionary and revolutionary uh, changes in detail so first uh, here given types of evolutionary change so this is about uh, types of evolutionary change developments in evolutionary change evolutionary change given socio so the first given socio technical this is about socio technical systems theory socio technical systems theory what it says according to this uh, socio technical systems theory managers need to fit or jointly optimize the workings of an organization's technical and social systems or in terms of current decisions in terms of current decision culture to promote effectiveness you see here according to this socio technical system there should be proper match in between the organization's technical and 
सोशल सिस्टम अ पुअर फिट बिटवीन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड सोशल सिस्टम लीड्स टू फेलियर बट अ क्लोज फिट लीड्स टू सक्सेस ना यू सी हाउ टेक्नोलॉजी हाउ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड सोशल सिस्टम्स आर गोइंग टू फिट विथ ईच अदर विल डिसाइड whether the organization will succeed or not if there it is proper fit in between the technology and the social system then uh, that will lead to success and uh, if there is pro poor fit if there is poor fit in between an organization's technology and social system then that leads to failure indeed the goal of total quality management the continuous improve now you see the the goal of total quality management continuous improvement in product quality so total quality management what is that uh, the continuous improvement in product quality draws heavily on the principles embedded in socio technical systems theory so does the development of flexible work workers and work groups so total quality management the second type of um, evolutionary change and the uh, flexible workers and flexible work team the third types of third type of uh, organizational change both draws both draw you can say both draw heavily on the principle embedded means both other type means total quality management and flexible workers and flexible work teams so both uh, use the principle of socio technical system theory second given total quality management it is an ongoing and uh, constant effort by all of an organization's uh, functions to find new ways to improve the quality of an organization's goods and services you see it is an ongoing and constant effort total quality management it is an ongoing and constant effort by all of an organization's functions to find new ways means to find new ways to improve quality of an organization's goods and services uh, organization continuously means the different functions of the organization continuously find out means they make effort they try, they apply efforts for finding new ways to improve the quality of the goods and services so that's why given to tq and total quality management is ongoing constant effort ongoing and constant effort by all of an organization's functions to find new ways to improve the quality of an organization's goods and services as in socio technical system theory the emphasis in technical uh, total quality management is on the fit between technical and social system so earlier also i ex explained that um, uh, t t total quality management and flexible workers and uh, flexible work teams uh, both uh, use the principle of uh, socio technical systems theory so changing uh, cross functional relationships to improve quality is a very important in total quality management you see here changing cross functional relationships uh, to improve quality is very important in total quality management It means how different functions are going to be related with each other will decide the quality uh, of total quality management poor quality often originates at crossover points or after handoffs so when people turn over the work they are doing to people in different functions you see where poor quality originates the poor quality originates at crossover points means so when one function hands over and the work to another function means if one function uh, has uh, done um, some part of the work and uh, remaining part of the works are going to be done uh, by other functions if there is uh, handoffs means uh, moving uh, the work from one function to another then at that uh, uh, point that at that crossover point uh, 
poor quality originates coordinating the design of various inputs so that they fit together smoothly and operate effectively together is one area of total quality management you see coordinating the design of various inputs what are different whatever different types of inputs are there so if they fit together smoothly and operate so coordinating the design of various inputs that they fit together smoothly and operate effectively together is one area of total quality management so so what this total uh, quality management does so it uh, coordinates it coordinates uh, various inputs so that they can fit together smoothly and operate effectively so that is the main area or you can say important area so again you see coordinating various inputs so that they can fit together smoothly and operate effectively that is one area of total quality management members of different functions work together to find new ways to reduce the number of inputs needed or to suggest design improvements that uh, will enable inputs uh, to be assembled now you see here if i will have to let's uh, check this again okay i was uh, explaining here members of different functions work together to find new ways to reduce the number of inputs so what they do is uh, different functions members of different functions try to uh, reduce the number of uh, inputs needed to suggest design improvements so that uh, that will enable inputs to be assembled more easily and reliably if less number of inputs are there then in that case uh, those inputs can be assembled more easily and reliably such changes increase quality and lower cost it means uh, reducing the number of inputs uh, will increase quality and lower cost the changes associated with total quality management are changes in tasks role and uh, group relationships yeah the changes associated with total quality management are changes in task role and group relationship so here task it is about change means changes related to tqm it is related to task it is related to changes in role it is related to changes in group relationship okay command and control model gives a way of an advice and support model command and control model gives way to an advice and support model. means whatever command and control model it was operating earlier that is going to convert into advice and support model means uh, earlier commands and control were used for improve for increasing the effectiveness of the organization but uh, when total quality management is used then in that case uh, that is going to convert in advice and support model means here now advice and support are used for improving the effectiveness of the organization two reasons for a lack of success with total quality management are underestimates of degree of commitment from people at all levels in the organization that is necessary to implement a total quality management program and the long time frame that is necessary for total quality management effort to succeed and uh, so results so why some you know what uh, tqm total quality management sometime not succeed so reasons are given two reasons the first reason is given that people are not committed to the level which is required for total quality management and the second reason given it takes long time for the total quality management to be effective so generally these two things are not possible 
in uh, organization so that's why total quality management sometimes fails or in, or we can say total quality management is not able to succeed for increasing the effectiveness of the organization so tq uh, total quality management is not a quick fix it takes time so that's written tq M is not a quick fix that can turn an organization around overnight. It is an evolutionary process that bears fruit only when it becomes a way of life in an organization. So it takes time. So it takes time to make people to work in accordance with the new way in accordance with the new ways of doing things or in accordance with the new effective ways of doing things flexible workers and uh, so what here it is given <coughs> flexible workers and flexible work teams we see the third uh, type of evolutionary change third type given as the demand for com components or finished products rises or falls flexible workers can be transferred to the task most needed by the organization it means transferring as a result the organization is able to respond quickly to changes in its environment it means if there is change in the environment for example if there is change in uh, some component or some product uh, then uh, accordingly then accordingly workers can be transferred to tasks which are important for the organization to further speed the development so it is about flexible work so to further speed the development of functional capabilities flexible workers are then grouped into flexible work teams so that's here given flexible work team so to further speed the development of functional capabilities to increase the development of functional capabilities func flexible workers are then grouped into flexible work teams okay so here you see speed to de in speed the development of functional capabilities workers are grouped into flexible work teams and what this uh, flexible work team is a uh, flexible work team is a group of workers who assume responsibility for performing all the operations necessary for completing a specified stage in the manufacturing process so in the manufacturing process this uh, flexible work team is responsible for performing all the operations necessary for completing a specified stage it means flexible work team is responsible for completing the work at particular specified stage here it will be clear by using uh, this diagram so if i okay now i think a uh, diagram here it is uh, visible on the screen so here given the use of flexible working work teams to assemble cars so here one example given so here one part of the work is given to this component the first component that is transmission component work team the second uh, part of the work is uh, given to brake systems component uh, work team and third part it is given engine uh, component work team and the fourth given exhaust system component work team so these all teams uh, prepare or you can say produce uh, different uh, components or manufacture different components and the final product is assembled here at the center that is uh, automobile uh, final product work team so this is this is the place or this is the team uh, where final assembly of those all components uh, happen
okay now i think it is feasible yes so self managed team assemble bricks and now you see those all teams those all components so just like here you can see here this one so comp this uh, engine component work team this is you know self managed team so this team is able to manage each and everything required for this part of the work just like uh, engine component work team so this is able to uh, this team is able to perform all the tasks um, which are required for this stage or this component self managed teams assemble brake systems exhaust systems and other components in accordance with the demands of the final product team driven by the customer demands according to the customer demands the different uh, components are going to be required the final product team assembles components to produce a car so according to the customer demand here uh, different components means uh, amounts of different uh, components are going to change and the final product so will also change according to the demand of the customer and uh, final products are going to be assembled according to that manager's role in this system is not to monitor and supervise the work team's activities but to facilitate team activities and do all they can do to allow the teams to develop improved procedures you see here managers are not going to monitor and supervise work teams what they are, what managers are going to do managers will facilitate team activities means they are going to provide platform means they are going to uh, provide resources for uh, different activities uh, for uh, different teams types of uh, revolutionary change so that's all that's all about evolutionary organizational change so three types i explained just now the first it was socio technical systems theory that was the first um, evolutionary organizational change the second it was uh, total quality management and the third it was flexible workers and flexible work teams now we move on to types of uh, revolutionary change so under this of uh, four uh, different uh, kinds of uh, organizational changes are there the first here it is given reengineering second given uh, e engineering third given restructuring and fourth given innovation so one by one i will explain this all in detail so first given reengineering so what ha what are different things happen in reengineering the term reengineering has been used to refer to the process so it is the process by which managers redesign how tasks are bundled into roles and functions to improve organizational effectiveness here yeah, it is a process reengineering it is a type of process by which managers redesign how tasks are going to be bundled means how different tasks are going to be bundled into different roles and functions to improve organizational effectiveness so here the main focus is um, to improve organizational effectiveness and how the organizational effectiveness can be increased or improved this is by redesigning redesigning how tasks are going to be bundled into roles and functions okay so that it is all about uh, reengineering so so it is uh, the process by which managers redesign how tasks are going to be bundled to increase the effectiveness so of the organization according to michael so this is the person who popularized this term reengineering this is michael hammer and j sam who popularized the term reengineering involves now here given reengineering involves the fundamental rethinking and radical design of business processes to achieve dramatic improvements in critical contemporary measures of performance such as cost quality service and speed you see this is fundamental rethinking means thinking rethinking means again thinking from the beginning or thinking from the different perspectives so reengineering involves fundamental rethinking and radical design of business processes to achieve dramatic improvements in critical contemporary measures of performance such as cost quality service and speed 
so change resulting from reengineering requires managers to go back to the basics and pull apart each part each step in the work process to identify a better way to coordinate and integrate the activities necessary to improve customer service with goods and services so managers go back in this uh, managers go back to the basics and pull apart each step means they start to think from the beginning they pull apart uh, each uh, component so in the process okay now where i was yes mm. Managers go back to the basics and pull apart each uh, step in work process to identify better. Means uh, they pull apart each step in the work process and identify better way to coordinate and integrate the activity. They try to find out better way how different uh, steps can be coordinated and integrated in better ways so that. Uh, it will provide customer with uh, goods and services it means better way to provide uh, customer with goods and services by identifying better way to coordinate different ways by pulling apart each step instead of focusing on the organization's functions the managers of the re-engineered organization focus on business processes so where they focus managers focus on business processes so that's here given the business processes they focus on companies companies don't re-engineer their sales or manufacturing departments they re-engineer the work the people in those departments do okay here the main focus is the work process not uh, different uh, functions or departments here they re-engineer means managers to re-engineer they try to improve the way things happen the way different uh, people working in different uh, functions or uh, departments uh, are doing so here given business process uh, an activity which uh, cuts across functional boundaries and which is vital to the quick uh, delivery of goods and services or that promotes a high quality or low cost zone. three guidelines for performing re-engineering successfully are given here so given three guidelines for performing re-engineering successfully uh, first uh, you can see first here i ticked just now organize around outcomes not tasks means here the main focus should be on outcomes not the task okay so we should change the task means we should improve the tasks but the main focus it is to the outcomes so where where possible organize the work so that one person or one function can perform all the activities necessary to complete the process thus avoiding the need for transfers between functions okay here the first uh, given avoiding the need for trans here managers try to avoid the need to transfer uh, different uh, parts of the work to different functions so what they do they try they try to organize work so that uh, one person or one function can perform all the activities it means uh, one function or one person is going to be responsible for performing all the activities necessary to complete the process means one process meaning one function or one person and that's it second guideline given for re-engineering uh, have those uh, who use the output of the process perform the process you see have those means use those people uh, who use the output of the process to perform the process 
since people who use the output of the process know best what they want establish a system of rules and standard operating procedures that will allow them to take control over it <clears throat> so since the people who use the output of the process know the best means who, whoever is doing uh, or performing the task know best what they want and it, they can establish a system of rules and standard operating procedures uh, so that uh, that it, it will allow them to take control over the work so that's why here given have those who use the output of the process perform the process it means you use or uh, those people who uses who uses uh, the output of the process to perform the process third uh, guideline given for re-engineering process for successful re-engineering process give a decentralized decision making to the point where the decision is made decentralized means giving authority to make decisions uh, to the people who are at the ground level who are performing the task allow the people on the spot to decide how best to respond to a specific problems that arise that's all about uh, the guiding principle for re-engineering then uh, second given it is uh, a engineering that's about engineering refers to the company's attempts to use all kinds of information system to improve their performance here in engineering organizations attempt to use all kinds of information system whether it is uh, information technology or some other methods to improve their performance third uh, type of revolutionary organizational change given restructuring so, so it refers to the process by which managers change tasks and authority relationships and uh, redesign organizational structure and culture to improve organizational effectiveness now again here the end result it is the organizational effect now you can say the goal uh, of organizational changes organizational effectiveness how managers uh, increase the effectiveness of the organization by restructuring here you see here managers change tasks manager change task and authority relationships and redesign organizational structure here changing the task and authority relationship means how uh, different tasks and authority are interrelated with each other and redesigning organizational structure so two things we should keep in mind in case of restructuring first thing is that uh, in relation in relationship among different tasks uh, are going to be changed and uh, organizational structure also going to be changed in case of restructuring the move from a functional to some form of divisional structure and the move from one divisional structure to another represents one of the most common kinds of restructuring effort so you see here what happens here a structure changes when organization moves from functional to divisional structure or moves from one divisional structure to another divisional structure so that's why here uh, changing the culture here for moving from functional to divisional or one divisional to another divisional structure will require the organization to change um, the relationship uh, how different uh, tasks or you can say how different tasks are interrelated with each other and uh, there should be also change in the culture and the structure of the organization for moving from uh, functional to division or from one division to another divisional structure as the environment changes and as the organization organization's strategy changes managers must analyze how well their structure now fits them so managers should analyze that uh, organize whatever organizations strategies are there means whatever changes in the organization strategies are there so whether those strategies are in accordance with the environmental changes or not so they should continuously analyze these things 
frequently they find that uh, there is a better way of grouping the products um, they now make to serve customer needs and move <coughs> For example from one kind of product structure to another so means they find means they can analyze continuously they can analyze continuously whether uh, organizational strategy it is in accordance with the environmental changes or not that's what they should do a type of restructuring that has become very common in recent years is downsizing so now here given downsizing that is a type of restructuring which is becoming very popular nowadays the process by which downsizing it is the process by which managers streamline the organizational hierarchy and lay off managers and workers to reduce bureaucratic costs here the main focus now here what happens the ultimate result of downsizing is the reduce bureaucratic costs so, the cost of maintaining a uh, and monitoring uh, different uh, departments and functions here reduced uh, in case of downsizing managers in uh, downsizing managers streamline the organizational hierarchy streamline means organizational hierarchy means they can they reduce organizational hierarchy and lay off many managers and workers so that uh, costs can be reduced Change in the relationship between divisions or functions is a common outcome of restructuring. Now you see change in relationships uh, between divisions or functions is a common outcome of restructuring. So restructuring results in change in the relationship between divisions and functions. Restructuring like re-engineering, total quality management and other change strategy generate resistance to change. So in the same just the way it was the resistance in case of um, uh, re-engineering or, or re-engineering or total quality management the same uh, those type of changes and um, those type of resistances are also possible here in case of restructuring so many plan <coughs> many plans to introduce uh, change including restructuring take a long time to implement and fail because of high level of resistance that they encounter at all levels of the organization so whether the organizational change will succeed or not again here depend on the level of resistance if resistance level is high enough or you can say powerful enough then in that case organization will not be able to change and the fourth uh, type of organizational change given innovation if the organization <clears throat> if organizations are to avoid being left behind in the competitive race to produce new goods and services they must take steps to introduce new products or develop new technologies to produce those products reliably and at low cost you see here uh, innovation here organizations are to avoid being left behind environment is changing continuously so so different uh, kinds of technologies are also being developed by resource and development uh, departments of different organizations so according to those developments in technologies organizations different organizations must change themselves so that they can be competitive enough to compete in the environment to survive so that's why here written if the organization are to avoid being left behind okay in the competitive race to produce new goods and services they must take steps to introduce new products so they must means organization must uh, introduce new products uh, or develop new technologies to survive so introducing new products or services or developing new technologies uh, are very important for the very survival of the organization Innovation is the successful use of skills and resources. You see, it is given about the innovation. What 
successful use of skills and resources to create new technologies or new goods and services so that uh, an organization can change and better respond to the needs of customers you can see here innovation is the successful use if any organization is able to use successfully skills and resources to create new technologies then uh, that is innovation I think that is uh, sufficient uh, for this.